Hello. This video is about a training a Laura model for stable diffusion. We will explain how to produce a perfect Laura model for a character, for a real person, uh, that it has uh, almost 100% uh, resemblance to the original subject. Drawings, they, don't, uh, they are not based on high resolution. Uh, my training data set does not contain square images, so the, the Laura model can actually crop the images and actually produce perfect results even for faces. So let's discuss this and the difference between using a small data set and a large data set and the settings that can help us produce these results faster. Okay, because uh, this training data set that I'm going to use that will produce these perfect results actually contains 330 images. We will see the difference between using 21 images and the use of 330 images for the training and the kind of results that are produced. So, in order to train Allura, we need to follow these steps. First of all, after installation of CoySS from, a, from the website, we prepare the dataset. The dataset is the most important part of the Allura training. All the remaining settings are less important. So, for example, the network dimension, the alpha value, the captioning, all of, this, all, all of these things are less important. What matters the most is having a good dataset. A good dataset. As a dataset, for example, for a person, it should have different poses, different lightings, different body shots, for example, face pictures, body pictures from front, from, from back, from side. So it, it, uh, we should have some balance in the picture, uh, in the data set, for example. We don't need many faces, for example. Only, for example, three to four faces only is, is enough. But we need many body shots if we want to have good body shots. If we don't have large number of data of body shots, for example, of full body shots, of half body shots, we will not be able to get to get good results. After this point, we caption the, the we caption it, set up the folders, set up the training data, train for a couple of epochs, then compare the epochs based based on initial results which are produced by CoISS. Then we do the comparison using stable diffusion using X Y Z comparison and select the model that is the best model. The best model is a model that can generate the same person with new clothes, new colors, and with high level of similarity. Okay? In some cases, our data set could ha only have 20 pictures, for example, or a small number of pictures. This is why if we want to have good models, good model for, for body shots, for example, we need to, cr to create the initial model using the initial data, then generate new pictures from the existing model and augment the data and add these new pictures to the original model. So if we tell we get, for example, 100 pictures or 200 pictures or 300 pictures, when we have large number of pictures, the LoRa will be able to train on this data with high level of flexibility and great results. Now, if I want to download real pictures from the internet, for example, I use download albums for Instagram, which allows me to download an entire album from Instagram. This is generally not uh, okay for commercial uses. It's only for educational purposes. 12 by 768, uh, okay. Uh, the 512 by 512 should be separate, like this. And the 512 by 768 should be separate, so we can use bulk Okay, and then save as. Um, in general, I actually prefer to use uh, a software that exists in, in Microsoft Windows, which I downloaded from Microsoft Store, which is which allows us uh, to resize a set of, of images. We fit, define the, the dimension, for example, 512 by 768 or 768 by 60, 768, which will resize the image the way we want. For now to start the training, we run we run Koi uh, SS LoRa graphical user interface application which will run in the browser like this here now initially it's in dream booth we would go to uh, dream booth LoRa but first we have to prepare the images for example uh, usually we have to caption the images captioning can be done using WD14 captioning or blip in general these are the most common methods blip is often used for people WD4 is used for people and enemy However, I have seen that WD4 is more used by uh, the stable diffusion models, so I prefer to use WD4 14. We will select the folder, for example, select the folder here of the image that we want to caption. 
Then we remove undesired tags. What does that mean? We don't. This is optional, so we don't have to do it. However, it's be, it's better to to include uh, the parts that we want in in the LoRa to be part of the LoRa. For example, in all in all of our images, we have one girl. We already know that we have a girl, so we can remove that. It's also we also want to remove solo, for example, because we don't want to, uh, these captions to repeat in all of the images. For example, if our images don't have uh, the back view, for example, we can remove the lips, the nose. Okay, so because we don't want these things to change. Okay, anything that we want to change, for example, the hair. If we want to change the hair color, for example, okay, it must remain in the captions. Okay, if we want to change the dress, it must remain in the captions. So we don't want to add. Them. However, if we want to use the same hair. We would use, for example, brown hair because, okay, we want the Laura to have brown hair all the time. But if we want the hair to change, we keep we we keep it in the caption. The complex data sets we don't use and we don't really need to do this because the training will be much better if we left every all the details, so the model will be more flexible. So we remove undesired tags and run the captioning. Once the captioning runs, it will tell us that captioning is done. The software could actually say that this is a man, not a woman, for example, okay, or make mistakes. So it's it's a good idea to come back and double check the captions one by one if we, we want to produce perfect results. However, often the automatic settings will produce good enough results. After this point, uh, it's possible to go to Dream Booth LoRa. Now we prepare the settings. We select the uh, the checkpoint. The checkpoint. If we want, for example, to uh, use chill out mix, we use, we select it. However, uh, because the LoRa will rely partially on some of the weights of this model, so a LoRa that is produced by chill out mix is unlikely to work perfectly on real realistic vision, for example. So, if we want to train on a stable diffusion. Uh, two, we have to check V2 and parameter, uh, V parameterization. Uh, we can also prepare the folders. The preparation of the folder can be done by uh, setting the class prompt, for example. Our case is a woman. That's the class. The instance is Olivia, for example, Olivia Costa. We select the training image and we set the regulariz regularization images. Now, this can be done manually, actually, because I usually do it manually because it's uh, it's faster, and uh, I always use the same folder. Okay, we define the number of repeats. That means how many repeats each image will have in every epoch. Number of repeats for, for regularization is often one. So, for example, if we use a regularization ima image, what are regularization images? Regularization images are basically images generated by the same stable diffusion model or or any other model actually in general but it's better to be produced by the same by the same uh, model for example like here this is this is this is the same set of images that i use for a person or for a woman for example which are sets of a set of images generated by stable diffusion so uh, they are basically random images which you, you can generate just going to stable diffusion just write a woman and uh, it will produce uh, you can set the batch number the batch count to produce for example 400 or 1000 images and collect them together into one set and remove the redundancies so, so it's better to remove the redundancies from this but it's not very important it's generally used to regularize the training which will reduce the overfitting it will make the model more flexible it's, it's not obligatory, so you can also train a LoRa without using, using regularization images. However, uh, in my tests, I have seen that regularization images can actually reduce the overfitting effect and increases the flexibility of the model. So it's better to use regularization. Now, folder preparations, we can use folder preparations like this. We need three folders, class, images, and log. Or use this uh, this uh, setting. We just try uh, define the training images and regularization images. We set the Olivia, for example, Olivia Casta uh, version one, for instance, woman. Define the number of repeats, and it will give us 
produce the results in a certain folder then we copy the info into folders tab to get to the folder or do this manually in class folder we define a folder for example class we put one that's how many repeats we want to train on each regularization images now in image we define the number of repeats first in my case here because i have a small data set we will use 40 if i have large data set then 10 is enough underscore the name of the model or the trigger word then space woman which is the class name if we are training a man we use man if we want to try we are training man and a woman we use use person if we are using uh, an object we would say for example an object or in general Okay, after we're done here, we have to go to, to the settings here. We define the source, define the folders, which are images, the model, the log, and the regularization set. This is regularization, okay. We define the model name output, which is the name of the file that will be produced at each epoch in a safe tensors format, for example, in the training parameter settings keep the defaults for the lower type if we are continuing a previous training for example if uh, i run for four epochs and i wanted to continue or if i run for five epochs and i found that let's test another epoch we would come here and choose the last generated epoch for example so it will continue the training from here it will load the weights and resume the training the batch size depending on the computer specifications if we have uh, over 8 gigabyte RAM with good uh, graphics card, it's possible to use 2, 3, 4, etc. The larger, the faster, the better. However, if you have a limited VRAM, for example, 8 gigabytes or under, then using one is more than enough. For the epochs, we define the number of epochs, for example, 10. We might break the training in the middle if we found that the results produced are overfitting for example and I will explain this is how, how this is done for graphic cards with RTX for example it's better to use BF but not necessarily, not necessarily we could use FB I use it for because I have uh, RTX it's the default learning training uh, the learning rate it's better to use to keep the default number we can increase it as well for example if we are using batch of two if we have two here, we could use two. If you have four here, we could use four. Keep it one, for example, here. Keep the default. Regarding network weight, now, in training people, I've, I've tried different settings. I've seen that the most effective one is 64 by 32 or 128 by 32. However, 128 for 20 images is just too much. Okay, actually, only 16 is enough. But usually, we put network and in the alpha we put half the value uh, i've seen that 64 in general produces good results so for a small data set 64 is more is more than enough we don't need 128 to train a set of data which are just 20 images that are three megabytes in size so it's not realistic even stable diffusion uh, is uh, is fit inside approximately four gigabit network neural network and strained on hundreds of thousands of images so if we have like 20 images even 16 or 8 network dimension of 8 is enough for this data set maximum resolution now this this will be read automatically we will enable buckets why do we enable buckets if we have different resolutions in the data set we enable buckets for example we have some images which are 512 by 512 other images are 512 by 768 so we enable buckets which is better if all our images are 512 by 768 for example we don't need to enable buckets now in advanced uh, settings we don't need to change anything basically okay uh, it's also good to, to have exformers installed and used because it makes the training faster Without exformers, the results could be slightly better, but it's basically almost unnoticeable. Flip augmentation, this means that the picture will be flipped and this will allow to augment the data set and can also produce better results in some cases. However, this will make this, the training much slower, a lot more slower. So Eclipse Skip, 
Eclipse Camp basically will remove the first two layers from the neural network of stable diffusion, then train, so it will make training faster. If we use Trib Eclipse Camp 1, it will be slightly slower, but it can produce slightly better results as well. So it's good to use Eclipse Camp 1 for people. Uh, in general, we keep it by default uh, to 2. Now, one a very important thing is to uh, use sample image, uh, images config. This is very important and very necessary in my opinion because it will allow us to generate images, for example, after each couple of steps or after each epoch. Uh, for example, if we want to generate after one epoch, we'll generate this prompt and it will give us an idea if the current epoch is actually starting to overfit. If the image starts to break, it means that we need to stop the training. We don't need to proceed till 10, 10 epochs. In some cases, for example, we might need to continue to 20 epochs or, or even more. Uh, regarding the prompt that is used, we should use a simple prompt like this. Okay, so it's a general prompt and we should use address that does not exist in the training dataset. For example, if our training dataset does not contain yellow shared, we will put yellow shared so because if we put yellow and it produces blue shirt, it means that it's overfitting because it has seen in the training data set that it only has blue shirts, for example. Okay, so we need to put something that does not exist in the data set to make sure that our model is actually flexible. After that, we press train model and start the training. Uh, so we come up after a while, we see that the model is generating a file for each epoch. Um, now, when the network uh, weight is, uh, for example, 128, the file size will be uh, 144 megabytes. So uh, we track the progress of the training. And we see, for example, here that at the ninth epoch, the loss is dropping down from 0 0.85, 0 0.8. So when the loss, usually when the loss drops significantly, that means that the model is actually overfitting, starting to over, overfit in general, when the loss drops very quickly. Initially, for example, we see that the loss is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.96, okay, 0 0.1. That's, that means that, okay, things are, are heading in the right direction. But when the loss starts to drop significantly, for example, 0 0.90 to 0 0.85, that means that it's most likely that we are starting to overfit. Okay. Uh, the second thing that the sample folder will contain the images for each generation, the captions at all, because the data set is very large. So I expect that the, the, the training will go just fine, even if the captions are not 100% perfect. So we will run the model once again using a new, a new name, for example, version v1, the same uh, model because we want to do the comparison, the same class, the same settings. I will use 10 epochs, okay? It's possible to use, because I'm going to use a large data set, I will increase this value up to 128 and see the results. Use two. Now, uh, the batch size is 2, epoch is 10, for example. Now, sometimes we might get errors because uh, we see that we have 3,000, 33,000 uh, different steps. If we get error, we can reduce the batch size down to 1. Here it shows, for example, the number of training images by the repeats. The epochs are 10. We have the regularization images along with the regularization images. We get a total of 33,000 steps. Okay. Now, in the training results here in this window, I, I trained uh, the different models, for example, using the same window. It's very important. Sometimes I think it's useful to check the settings after running the model because sometimes you might be making a mistake. Okay, let's compare uh, the different uh, models that have been produced using the Olivia test and COVID, the airbox that I want to compare between each other. Now, this version, version 0 0.1, which are which is the small data set, this is the large data set, which, uh, which has a network dimension of 128, and this is the 64 network dimension 
model. So we will compare these models using stable diffusion using XYZ comparison. Now in general, when we want to prompt, okay, if we provide more details in the prompt, it's able to, to create more accurate results. For example, like here, okay, so the picture will be more accurate. We can generate another picture and check the results. We can see that the generated image is very similar to, to the, the, uh, the person that we have trained. If we re reduce the prompt, then the image generated uh, will be slightly different it will be very close to the target but it will be slightly different this is why prompting actually matters in the production of the results okay so it's still similar to our uh, to our original images for example this is olivia so it's still very similar to, uh, to to the person but if we don't include additional details their similarity will become less because uh, because when i when i captioned uh, the pictures i i added uh, the complete details and i did not edit the captions Okay, so because I wanted as much flexibility as possible so that I, it becomes possible to change the hair color, for example, to share, to change the eye colors, everything, basically everything, okay? Now, uh, if you want to compare the different models, I have generated... So this is the conclusion. The conclusion is that increasing network dimension will uh, make the learning faster. Uh, it's very important to have large network dimension if we are training large data sets we also need a quality data set. This is the most important part of the training of LoRa. So having a, good, a quality data set will produce quality results that can change the clothes, change the hair, change the, the color of the eyes, change all the details in the picture. Um, this is it and uh, have a good day.